So we're just speaking of uh, back to school and uh, coming from the Ministry of Education, the State Minister, Mr. Orlando Terrilong, says changes to the funding formula for public high schools are coming as a discord over the amount schools charge parents as contribution emerges emerges with the approach of the new school year. I think we were talking about this mm -hmm. last week when I was suggesting sure was. that you have all kind of auxiliary fees and parent support contribution and all kinds of stuff. Um, so, the education ministry apparently had abolished the term auxiliary fees and replaced it with the term parent support contribution hmm. and also set certain guidelines for the contributions from parents. So, so yes. that's what we were talking about yeah. last week. You were saying you thought all fees were abolished. Yeah. And I, say, you're and I was you're saying to you that there's, not, not right, yeah. there's some fees that they put in to help the school along. So whether you call it auxiliary or you call mm. it what is parent support contribution, it is still a fees. But is the parent support contribution mandatory? an exact amount and is it mandatory? Yeah, yeah, I think it would be it would be an exact amount. Um as to whether it's mandatory, I think they try to get it from all the parents, but I suppose if they're parents who cannot pay it, they may give it. I'm sure they don't get 100% compliance for this, but it's something that they set out and ask for. Yeah, it's not if you can help give this to us, if this is what you have due. So they may make an exception based on the, whether you can or cannot pay and, it. And hold them when they can or can't. If I just say I can't. I guess because they, you, they don't ever get it. But in the same way that you get a school package with your slip that says you need to pay this and that, mm. you'd get one that says parents support contribution, 10 20, grand, 20 for yeah. example. Yeah, and yeah. I say, I can't afford it. Then what? I don't think they would penalize you. I think the policy is that they would not penalize you, but they would make every effort to get it from you. And you should make every effort to pay. And if you can't pay it in full, then you pay something. All right, one more question now. Is the parent support contribution the same at St. John's College as it is at no. Immaculate or at mm -hmm. Kingston College? Mm -hmm. So who decides what the parent contribution is? It would be the school that would set it based on whatever their needs are, based on whatever um, equipment or infrastructure or whatever they would need to fix. Primary All right, so here's an answer to a question I just asked you. Students should not be denied entry to schools because of their parents' inability to pay. You mm -hmm. just said that. The policy is that contribution cannot be mandatory and must not be a requirement for registration, school access, attendance, or criteria for graduation, examination, slips, mm -hmm. application to sixth form, or access to any public service. That's what's been, been said for a while. But right. no more than 5,000 is allowed to be charged for registration packages for new students for their, this academic year. At what level? Schools should discuss and Primary get approval. Primary or secondary? It just said no more than 5,000 okay. is allowed. Parents must not be forced to pay a contribution. Schools are asked not to combine the cost of consumables into the cost of packages and mandate payment from parents for the full cost. For example, a charge in packages for five school crests when the parent might not require or may not be able to afford mm -hmm. five at once. Mm -hmm. so, right. Hmm. Well, you can use two and probably just find a way to... But don't them you, from shirt to shirt. I was just going to say, but don't you sew them on? Not shirt? necessarily. Or you, you can see. press them on. Or you just pin them on. Some people can pin them. But it they look, might it use double sided nice tape. So you, sometimes you don't know how those crests are put on. And if you have to be creative, people find creative yeah. ways. The other thing is that some kids only have two shirts. Yeah, so, so you, you might wear crests, So you yeah. just keep washing it yep. every day or. You know what I mean? But if the schools fall short of the funds during the course of the year, they say that they can write to the permanent secretary and ask for additional support okay. to help close the deficit. So there is a, a fail safe in case they don't okay. get the money that they want to raise. What's the next one? This is incredible to me. Spanish Town Hospital, um, they say heads out to roll for an imposter who was working in the a &E for over a week. Yes, you heard me correctly. A fake doctor. I mean, we've been talking about fake news for the longest while. Well, this one, he's real. Uh, went with Charles, chairman of SARA, that's the South East, South East Regional Health Authority, vigilant nurses at the busy Spanish Old Hospital in St. Catherine, recently accosted a man who posed as a doctor for over a week in the A&E department. 
He apparently showed up for work one day late last month in his doctor's uniform with the required medical gear and proceeded to work. Um, nurses who've been there for a while became suspicious following complaints from patients and questionable diagnoses from the quote-unquote doctor, which then caused them to alert the hospital security. Police were summoned and they took the gentleman into custody. Um, said Mr. Charles, I have ordered a full investigation into the circumstances under which a medic imposter was apprehended by hospital personnel and security at the Spanish Town Hospital Accident and Emergency Department. I've asked the CEO, Dwayne Francis, and Regional Director Maureen Golding to lead that investigation and provide a full report for the Board of Sierra at the next board meeting in September, and heads will roll. This is amazing. Hear what I don't understand now. So the patients that he dealt with would not have paid him any money, I suspect. No. Because he had the hospital. Right. Right. So what him get out of this? Just to, to, to what? Well, it's not like, in other words, not like him earning from it. Now I'm asking you. Don't you don't know. You'd, I'm asking. How can you? I can't tell you what's in the mind of somebody who goes on I know. as well. I Remember in Israel, Bahamas the other day, they, they held a couple of people who were pretending. Is that self-actualization thing? You're pretending yeah. to be, you know, maybe something he's always wanted to do and he's never got a chance to do it. Maybe he tried to be a doctor and he never made the great. I mean, it could be, I guess what that's what the investigation will show. Yeah. But the fact that this man was able to do this for a week. Incredible. Treated patients. Incredible. Um, it is man. very scary. And probably misdiagnosed and... <coughs> Salud. True word. Bless that you. Mean. Thank you very much. Wow. Um, All right. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we'll hear more about this in September. Yeah. JUTC can't meet demand in Portmore, says the headline. Company franchising 10 rules to shore up woefully inadequate service. Those are not my words. Um, Who? JUTC overall, though. Yep. It says taking steps to meet the ballooning commuter demand. In Portmore, uh, Mr. Abrams, who's head of the state-owned bus company, he says JUTC hopes to fill some of the current gaps, but at this point, the company is exploring how best it can remedy the shortfall. He said the routes are now serviced by a mix of JUTC units, sub-franchisees, and illegal operators. Mm -hmm. They said the bus company currently has approximately 80 units on the 10 routes. He says, one of the reasons we're doing this, we believe that the service is woefully inadequate. I think the demand is much greater. We don't have units to suffice the demand. The problem is we don't have a clue what the current demand of Spanish Town or Portmore is because those are the two main dormitories where persons travel in the morning and in the evening. And if you run 140 buses out in the morning, you're leaving people behind. You're still leaving people behind. And you have coaster and taxis picking up persons that they are still commuters being left behind. So can't we find a way to see what the traveling population is coming out of Portmore? I mean, anecdotally, is a whole yeah. heap yep. of people, clearly. There's got to be a way to figure it out, a survey maybe, a, a poll maybe, yep. a, maybe observation, I don't know. Different research methods that you can use because if you can't figure it out, then you can't remedy the situation. But it's safe to say it's a lot of people because if you're running this much transportation and you're still leaving people behind and the folks need to be able to get to work, it's too much of a hassle for people to get out of, um, of Portmore, which is just right there when you think about it, you know, in a fall. Mm -hmm. so it ought not to be this complicated. So we're hoping JUTC will be able to. And you see, what happens in situations like this is when people cannot get away to get to work and get to school and them just grab anything they can get, which is why the legal operators are there filling the gap that the legitimate folks cannot. Mm. And we know how that story go. Yeah, well, there you go. Anywho. Hopefully they'll work that out. That's that.